I've, I've had one just recently. Uh, I have four-year-old twin boys. And I watched one just the other day depict a person for the first time. And you think that's not much of a big deal, right? They just, and he described that he was running and one of my boys was, was really into this. And just watching that whole world is like a language. I don't know if you've, if you've ever learned a, another language. Suddenly this thing that was mysterious now opens up. And I just, just watching him uh, see this other world of possibilities and representational art that you can draw something that looks like something else. And he was so excited that I got excited by this little sketchy stick figure on, drawn in crayon. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I've really felt that, just watching somebody uh, express themselves so perfectly and uh, seamlessly in another way for the first time. That was really neat. Paying it, paying it more than lip service, seeing it as a foundational thing, talking about it as seriously as we talk about things like the economy, uh, international affairs, war, and whatnot. We, art occupies a second or third tier uh, of importance in most politicians' minds. It's, a, it's an add-on, it's a nice thing, but it's not essential, it's not foundational. And that's hard for a lot of MPs to come to, um, and the approach that I sometimes take is because most of us would not consider ourselves artistically anything. Maybe we can appreciate music or a nice piece of art, but most politicians are not uh, artistically inclined. Although some of us are able to speak and tell stories. And I think art, for me, broadly, is generally about telling our story as a country, as a people, as people within a country. And so when talking about the importance of the arts to my colleagues, I ask them how important it is to be able to tell our stories. How important is it for them to tell the stories of their communities, where they come from, of their family? And that's one access in to a sometimes inaccessible conversation. Because again, if it's seen as an other, that's something other people do. It's an add-on. It's a, a pat on the head. Then it'll never get the attention that it deserves. It'll never get the focus. It'll, it'll be derided at worst and paid lip service at best. This government, it's tough. I, it, my answer wants to go to the political and say the, the thing that is most consuming this government is power and the pursuit of power. And that's not only them. That's typical of governments. The backlash they had from cutting funding for the arts in Quebec a couple of elections ago, at, at least in Quebec, taught the prime minister that this was not a good political move for what is a relatively small amount of money in the grand scheme of things, that this government is contemplating a $5 billion tax cut for rich people right now. The arts is not asking for $5 billion, not anywhere close. The, uh, I, I hate to bring it down to politics and currency of votes and whatnot, but I'm not sure that a, a, uh, an intellectual or moral appeal to say this is the right thing to do, this is what great governments do is help Canadian artists tell our story to ourselves and to the world. That, I think that argument might fall on deaf ears for conservatives right now. Um, they don't see it as their so-called base. They do care about politics. They do care about winning. And I don't even know if that can appeal at this point. Um, so I'm a hopeful guy, generally. Uh, when it comes to appealing to Mr. Harper about the arts, that is a, you'll have to be very, very creative, <laughs> if I can put it that way, because appeals to this point haven't generally worked. Um, although he, is, he seems to be fascinated by some stories, some parts of the Canadian story, the more the history of war, the history of Franklin and these types of things, more the colonial side of Canada's story. But it's fine to, to look to the past. It's great to remember your history, but I want to know what Canada is going to be. And often you want to look to the artists to find that out, and the inventors and the innovators, um, not to where a, a ship is sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Inherently, it's a patriotic event, right? It's celebrating the nation and the birth of the nation. 
I think part of patriotism is challenge to challenging the stories. The, the place I represent, about 40% are odd, so First Nations, and uh, which are often held up. If you look to when Canada showcases ourselves to the world at our large museums or at Olympics and those types of things, we bring First Nations to the front and say, look at that, look at that art, look at the culture, dance and whatnot. Um, and, and then the Olympics are over, the, the showcase event is over, and we revert back to not caring much about First Nations people. We need to see the whole continuum of not just First Nations art and culture, but artists that we don't only celebrate at times when we're explicitly describing a, an event for Canada, but seen as part of something that weaves through our policy making, a lens in which, through which we see ourselves and uh, how we manifest government. So that sounds a bit philosophical. Um, I'm, I'm looking over your shoulder, there's a flag there, Jack's flag was a fellow who took the Canadian flag and then added to it and had people add to it after Jack died. And uh, I thought that was a beautiful addition to the Canadian story. This building that we're in in Parliament is not, it's an unfinished building. There's all sorts of pieces of this building still being built and carved and chipped away by artists. Um, and I love that metaphor simply because Canada is an unfinished story. This building is unfinished and it'll never be finished. Canada is a conversation that goes on and on. And when I'm in other countries, particularly imperial type countries, the US and Britain and whatnot, they have this very fixed idea of themselves as powerful and strong and you see it represented in their art, a fixed permanent thing. I think there's a fluidity to Canada's story um, that only artists can really get at. Because it sounds counterintuitive. Isn't a country supposed to be a fixed, solid, permanent thing, as opposed to a, a, a movable feast? And uh, Canada, I think, just by its nature, for the, for the inherent Aboriginal impact, the massive amounts of immigration that comes to this country, like my family, we are a moving thing. We are a growing thing. Um, and artists can reflect that back to us beautifully. Politicians, not so much, generally. I know the party's on it quite a bit. What proposals or question have I made? Very few. I don't know if I have a lot of answers personally. I see this as an incredible challenge and a real crossroads as this technology puts this challenge upon us. The, the, the great benefit of the digital world is open access to the world, right? That shooting a, a video here or there, uh, putting a piece of art online, it, it exposes the artist to far more people, potentially, than ever thought possible. The reverse is also true, the world wants access in here. And so for something like Canadian content, where we seek to have a certain amount of what we view uh, being Canadian, it's a real challenge. I don't know if I have myself any easy answers for it. That to not address the problem though, or the challenge, is uh, an issue. If, if the government simply says, well, the market will take care of this and handle it, well, this is one point the role of government may be called in, simply because this is what we did with radio, it's what we did with television, this is how we fostered many great talents who have both been commercially successful and artistically successful. So it's not an, I don't have a simple answer for you. I don't have one that I can package up and say, if we were to do this, then Canada's digital online uh, influence would be magnified. I, I don't have an answer for that. Let me speak to the first question as to whether we've taken a position yet. I, I don't believe we've had on the current proposal, but past history would lead one to believe that will be very supportive. Because broadly speaking, New Democrats have been supportive of the arts and sees the connection between government and the artistic community. That being said, um, to, to the question of how to make this a, an obvious and supportable idea of increasing this fund to allow artists to access more Canadians to tour, to do all these things, I think there might need to be a better job in connecting back what the money does to Canadians more broadly, not just parliamentarians, so that when I see an exhibit tour through our small town or I see an artist or a band going out on tour, that 
there's an understanding of how that was enabled with public support, um, simply to have that positive affiliation to it, and then bind all the parties, not just New Democrats, but all people of all political persuasions to this being a really good investment. Because you're right in the broad scheme of a $280 billion budget, $300 million isn't a lot. But $300 million is still a lot of money. That is just, to, to anybody on the street, if I say, well, $300 million, doesn't sound like much. It's a whoa. It's, it's being able to translate it into what it enables and what it can then represent and what it has enabled in the past. Remember that great thing you saw? Remember that great piece that was eventually featured around Canada? Um, it's community by community. I really do think this. I really feel like um, when I think of what you're talking about, I think of particular artists, particular shows, things that have gone and uh, helped tell a story that wouldn't have been told otherwise. And um, having that better connection back to Canadians will make them more broadly supportive. And then the idea, I suppose, would be that all politicians would see this as a no-brainer. And then you'd be pushing an open door when you got to the finance committee because right now you're not. Right now you're, you're going to see a, a government that, again, doesn't see a lot of votes in this maybe, or I'm not sure what application they're making, but um, it's going to be an uphill battle to get this even into the committee's report and get it recommended to the Minister of Finance. Those are all my questions. Is there anything you might like to add? I think I'm, I'm pretty biased on this and more and more. Um, I, I think of um, the place that I represent in, from northern BC where storytelling is a huge part of what we do and that the best stories are ones that, that, that get repeated. It's a very much a, a First Nations tradition that you repeat the same stories again and again so they deepen and they become part of the collective understanding of some place and people and I've, I've had the privilege of being around the country uh, and talking to a lot of Canadians, and we love our stories. We love them. We like to repeat them. Wherever you go, they've got their stories. And that's great. And, and being able to connect that is an essential part of our DNA, that we are all storytellers. We're all stories ourselves. And that what artists seek to do is represent those stories in a lot of different ways. And I think that's then an essential thing. That's not as seen as an, as an afterthought. That's just seen as breathing. And if we get to that place when we consider the arts, then uh, you, know, you don't have to go cap in hand. It, it's, just, it's, it's something that we just automatically do. And then as much as we think about funding the police or making sure our airports are safe or making sure our kids get to school, um, we also see the arts as something that's core essential, not the first thing that's tossed off the ship um, when things get tight.